So first we need to talk a little bit about why we have qualifiers. Um, we have qualifiers because Hard Rock is always being considered a graduate level 100 mile race. Um, the primary reason, but not the only reason, is safety. Um, we want runners to know what they're getting into and to make sure that they can get around the course safely, survive the weather safely, and um, have some reasonable chance of finishing. Um, thus, we tend to choose only tough races as qualifiers. Um, we uh, have a number of, we have two hard requirements. First, that a race actually has to be at least 100 miles long, so we don't consider 50 milers or 100K races. Secondly, that um, it has to have been held twice in good standing because we want to know that races you know, uh, have some legs, that they're going to be around for a while so they don't have a whole lot of churn for the qualifiers, and that, um, uh, that they're held well, um, and that uh, they're administered well, and that people have good things to say about them. We have a number of informal criteria. Um, for example, uh, we like to have races that have at least 20,000 feet of climb. Uh, we like to have races that have multiple sustained climbs of 3,000 feet or more, you know, as opposed to races, say, that have a lot of total climb, but it's all in increments of 100 feet or a couple hundred feet or 500 feet. Uh, we want races that have a, that where runners spend a significant amount of time over about 8,000 feet elevation, because of course at Hard Rock you're going to be, you know, the average elevation is 11,000 feet. We want to weed out people that have trouble with altitude. Um, Colorado weather is a big plus. Uh, you know, one of the biggest challenges of Hard Rock, besides the terrain itself, is is the weather. And um, we like people to have some experience with Colorado weather and know, for example. Um, how to recognize an impending thunderstorm. Uh, we like to have aid stations that are many hours apart because it's going to be like that on Hard Rock. You're going to be three, four, maybe five hours between aid stations, and we want to make sure that runners are prepared for that. And finally, we like to have races that are geographically distributed. Um, we like them spread around the United States and Canada um, and in Europe um, and on other continents in the world so that runners uh, have an opportunity to do a qualifier. Or runners who are not in the U.S. Now, races don't have to satisfy all of those informal criteria. We look at the whole package, and you know, if races are good on some of those, we can slide a little bit on some of the others. Um, in particular, uh, there are uh, in our effort to get global coverage for qualifiers, um, we choose some races uh, that in other parts of the world that probably wouldn't be a qualifier if they were in the U.S. Um, because they have that advantage of, of um, being accessible to people that can't easily get to the United States. We also require that races be supportive of the local community and of the ultra running community in particular. So we're, you know, we're looking for races that have some good standing in, in the ultra running community. We're also looking for races that have some kind of a staying power. This kind of goes with that having been held at least twice. For example, um, if there's a race that's, that only has two dozen people running it and that number isn't increasing from year to year, we probably would not choose that as a qualifier. We want to have races that are going to be around for a while. Also for qualifiers, we do not consider uh, FKTs or fat ass style races or stage races. Um, we actually require that a race uh, be um, you know, a formal race that is advertised and that people can sign up for somewhere. Um, we, uh, it would be too subjective particularly to include things like FKTs because we'd have to look at that on a runner by runner basis and that would just take too, too much time when we have as many applicants as we do. Um, we do uh, include a number of 200 mile races, although we require uh, that a 200 mile race basically have at least 100 miles of it that would on its own be considered a qualifier. Uh, so, you know, it's got to be it's got to be a tough, you know, sort of uh, equivalent toughness per mile of what we would uh, include for a 100 mile race to be a qualifier. You know, one point I want to make is that you know, we're, we're not trying to diss any race by not including it as a qualifier. There are many, many good races 
that um, are not hard rock choir qualifiers. I've run a whole bunch of them myself and they're, they're hard races and I've enjoyed them and they're well run. Um, but, uh, you know, so, so this isn't some kind of a, um, an effort on our part to pick out the good races. Um, not at all. Uh, we're particularly looking at the criteria that I've laid out already. We currently have 29 qualifiers, um, of which about half of them are outside of the United States. Uh, we have seven in Europe, two qualifiers are in Asia, um, three are in Australia or New Zealand. We don't currently have any qualifiers in South America or Africa, although we would certainly like to um, if um, races that meet our criteria are held in those locations. We require that runners complete one of our qualifiers within the previous two calendar years. So for example, for this summer's Hard Rock in the year of 2023, uh, runners will have, have to have completed a qualifier in 2021 or 2022. Um, the only exception is Hard Rock itself. Uh, Hard Rock is considered a qualifier for the last three times that it's been held. Uh, during COVID, we relaxed this rule a little bit because so many races were were canceled. So uh, we we uh, included some previous years in our qualifiers. Hopefully that won't be a problem going forward. We do not allow runners to enter Hard Rock um, with, uh, with the expectation of finishing a qualifier in the future. They actually have to have finished one. Um, that means that, for example, if, you're, if the race you're running, that you're planning on running for a uh, qualifier is canceled or postponed into the next year, unfortunately, you're just out of luck. Um, we require that people actually have completed within the time window uh, the qualifier that they're going to use. If a race is is changes the course substantially due to weather or wildfire or permitting issues, uh, we reserve the right to reevaluate the, uh, the new course and may not consider it as a qualifier um, even though it's already been run. Um, this has been an issue a couple times where a race was cut short, for example, due to weather. And, you know, we've, we've evaluated that on a case-by-case -case basis. Each year we add and delete qualifiers, although there isn't a set number that we're aiming for. Basically, if there's a race that meets our criteria better than one of our existing races, and it's in the same geographic area, we may replace the existing one with a new qualifier. When we do that, though, um, we will grandfather in the old race that we're removing so that runners who have already finished it and can use it as a qualifier are not left in the lurch. So, uh, you know, people aren't going to lose qualifiers that they think they already have, even if we delete it from future uh, consideration as a qualifier. Um, you know, when Hard Rock was first established in 1992, there was only a handful of 100-mile trail races in the United States and not any that I'm aware of elsewhere in the world. Uh, so um, we had a pretty limited number of races that we could consider for qualifiers. And thus, there were a number of races that were qualifiers at one time in the past that are no longer qualifiers. Um, this is this, you know, process of of um, adding in new qualifiers and taking some out as we go along. Uh, since we have right now about 17 runners for or 17 applicants for every uh, starting slot that we have in Hard Rock, um, we don't feel a great need to expand the number of qualifiers we have um, and to expand thus expand the applicant pool. Um, you know, that would just make it harder for people, uh, you know, for people to get in even more so than it is now. Now, we're certainly aware that being a hard rock qualifier can make or break a race. Um, certainly, it can lead to uh, a particular race getting more applicants. Um, this is something we're aware of. It's not something we explicitly consider in choosing qualifiers, uh, but it, that's out there. Um, finally, if uh, RD of a race would like it to become a, a hard rock qualifier and feels that it meets the criteria that we've laid out, they should contact Ken Gordon, who is on our board of directors and is the chair of our qualifying subcommittee of the board of directors, and uh, contact him and, and make the case with him. The uh, qualifying race subcommittee will 
come up with a, a slate of potential additions and deletions to the list of qualifiers that the entire board of directors will consider and vote up or down uh, individually. And we typically do that once a year, um, typically in the fall. Um, so thank you for, for your attention. If you have further questions uh, about qualifying and about uh, individual qualifiers, feel free to contact myself, Blake Wood, or Ken Gordon. You can find both of our contact information on the Hard Rock webpage.